IPA costs money, but it can be recycled. Hey guys, I do a fair bit of resin printing and get through a lot of IPA when cleaning prints, but rather than fork out for more, I eke it out as much as possible. Here's your typical used IPA, dirty and cloudy, but we can get this nice and clean. Initially, I use one of these resin straining filters. Pour the used IPA into a clear bottle, plastic or glass, and filter out any bits of solidified resin that may be there. What's left is cloudy and messy, and this is full of uncured resin. It's very easy to get rid of this. Just place the bottle on a windowsill, indoors, for a couple of weeks. Make sure it's out the reach of kids and mark the bottle to make sure no one drinks it by accident. There's no rigid time frame involved. Just wait for it to become clear. There's more than enough UV coming through the glass to do the job, even on a window that doesn't see direct sunlight. Eventually, you end up with something like this. Hopefully, yours will be a little bit clearer but I'll come back to that in a minute. Now we need to filter this again to remove the cured resin sediment. I found paper coffee filters work very well and I purchased these cheaply on Amazon. Just place them in a funnel and pour gently into a container. Well, that's the ideal way of doing it, but the problem is the funnel blocks off very quickly. The funnel has quite a small opening through which the liquid has to flow. So despite the size of the filter paper, only this part actually filters. And once that clogs, you need another filter paper, which is very wasteful. So I designed this filtering funnel. It's essentially one funnel inside another. The innermost funnel has lots of holes in it, meaning there's more surface area for the filter to act upon. I simply printed this on an FDM printer, though a resin print might survive a fair while. Trust me, this is a vast improvement on a standard funnel, though paper filtering is still not a fast process, but it is quite efficient. It's easy enough to design your own filtering funnel, but if you fancy supporting me, you can buy the STL file on my Etsy store. From there, you can rescale it as you wish, and it's a simple, support-free print, and the funnel works great. Alternatively, maybe a simple sieve would work. And that, in a nutshell, is how I recycle my IPA, and double, triple, and even quadruple the life of it. However, I find once I've repeated this process several times, the recycled IPA takes on more colour, like this one, and, perhaps because I use a lot of speciality resins, it becomes a little sticky and just doesn't clean properly. This got me wondering if there was another way to clean this, and I found myself thinking back to my school day chemistry classes. And once I'd stopped thinking about Miss Randall and her delicate handling of my Bunsen burner, I thought about distillation. Put simply, distillation converts a liquid into a gas and then condenses this back into a liquid. The process is perfect for removing impurities, and that means another mad experiment for me. caution here. Boiling alcohols is a volatile affair, and you're dealing with very flammable materials. As well as obvious safety concerns, 
there could well be a question of legality in some areas, as you're effectively running a still. I decided to use a water bath to support my distillation vessel, as this should hopefully slow down the heat transfer and make it more controllable. The filtered IPA goes into the flask. The flask goes into the water bath, or in my case, a saucepan. These sit on a tripod above a Bunsen burner. A hose from the flask is connected to a collection vessel which sits below the level of the flask. So, the water in the saucepan was heated to around 85 degrees Celsius. This in turn heated the IPA to the same temperature and caused it to boil. This generates steam or vapour inside the flask and thanks to my makeshift bung, the vapour now had nowhere to go except into the hose, where it cooled, condensed and theoretically became nice clean IPA. But did it work? Well, yes, but it took ages. Honestly, I ran the thing for about three hours and found I was constantly adjusting the temperature to prevent things from getting too hot. In hindsight, a Bunsen burner was not really the way to go, even though memories of Miss Randall made it very special for me. If I lived in a sunnier climate, a solar still would be safer and more practical. Alternatively, a more controlled hot plate might work better too. But frankly, given the amount of energy, time, possible legality, and sheer danger involved, distilling IPA is not something I'd recommend anyone doing, unless chemistry really is your thing. By all means, filter your IPA in the fashion I described at the beginning and extend its purchase life. But if and when it stops being effective, just shop around and get a better deal. It makes much more sense. So there you go guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. That's it for now. Take care and thanks for watching.